Good afternoon, everyone. We are talking about the EPS staff certification for 24-25 today. Um, my name is Alexandra Cookson. I'm the data quality trainer for the Department of Education data team. And we, um, I help with navigating Synergy and NEO uh, for staff certification. This is all going to be in NEO. Um, we will talk about both parts of the report today um, and some of the steps for final, finalizing and certifying this report. The staff certification report is uh, for EPS calculations. So uh, before your superintendent can certify this report, all staff assignments have to be moved from a pending or an in progress into an active assignment. So that's something that needs to be done with each staff member individually in NEO staff. So you'll have to go into each member, uh, update their information for this current school year, and then uh, submit at the bottom for them to become active. We'll get into that uh, in detail as we go. Then uh, staff certification will not be accepted, uh, so you won't be able to do it if you have any pending staff um, uh, pending staff assignments. So if there's anyone who is still in a pending status, that will prevent you from being able to certify this report. Um, SNUs without a librarian or a nurse can select the superintendent as the district role without giving them the staff assignment for librarian or nurse. So if you don't have those um, positions in your SAU, you can use your superintendent in that um, district role. You do not need to put them in as an active staff assignment, though, for uh, the librarian position or the nurse position. They can just keep their active 1.0 FTE for uh, superintendent. So entering staff is done in NEO staff. Um, steps to get in there are from NEO, you're going to go into staff, and then updating any staff members are going to be, is going to be under manage staff. Uh, locating this report is under certification. Um, so that's a little bit different. But we're going to talk about updating staff briefly here. We did have a webinar a couple of weeks ago at the beginning of um, September, where uh, we talked more in detail about staff assignments and things like that. That is available on the DOE data uh, YouTube playlist, so please feel free to go and find that. That one is our publicly available one, um, so please feel free to find that from our website. If you do not have a NEO, uh, NEO account, we will need an access request for you so that you can get into NEO staff that will have to be submitted by your superintendent um, on your behalf. If you do not have an active staff assignment, someone else in the SAU with uh, staff access will need to get you access. Uh, we'll need to update your staff assignment, add you in there for your new SAU so that you can have that um, access request processed. So we're still talking about adding staff. All of the information that we're going to talk about today will be done in the staff module, though. Um, so we're going to select staff. From here, we have manage staff, which has the staff search and the SAU search. So if you're adding a new staff member to your district who has never been in your district before, that's going to be the staff search. So you're going to search for all staff members in the state. You can select from the pool that's already there, or if they've never worked in a main school, you can add a new contact or add a new person to uh, the staff search. The SAU search is going to be for any returning staff members who need to be updated for the current school year. So if they were, they were teaching last year in your SAU and they are returning again this year teaching the same subject or a new subject, you can select them from the SAU search. So here's the difference between the two. So this is the staff search. When you're here, you're just going to use your last name, first name, date of birth, and you're going to search for the staff member. If you have a staff ID, you can search using the staff ID as well. Once you've done that work, you will either see them listed here um, or you will see that you can add a new staff member. If you do find them listed, uh, make sure you check birthday, everything is accurate uh, before you go to try and add a uh, staff assignment. Under here, you're going to select edit, uh, and then you can update them if they've already existed in the system before. SAU search, uh, this is going to be your returning staff. You will select your SAU that you're going to be putting them into or that they're already in um, for your uh, reporting. From here, you can see that this particular position is still in progress. That means that the report cannot be certified until this is updated to active. In order to do that, you're going to have to select 
staff ID number in order to get into their staff assignment. That will bring you to a screen from here. Same thing will happen if you're adding a new staff member, you'll get through their initial like staff demographic update information, and then you'll come to this screen here. Please note on this screen that if you're trying to edit an existing position, somebody who's already been in a position with your district, uh, they will need to be um, updated up here at the top. So you'll have to select actions and then you'll select edit in order to update an existing staff assignment. Um, if you have a new uh, staff member or if you have a new staff person or, that, or someone that's doing an additional task this year or a new task this year in your district, that would be done on this add assignment screen. So the add assignment screen will not update an existing position. It will uh, create an additional one for them. So please just be aware of that when you're coming in here. If you have your staff members who need to be updated, they are still for this person. If they're still a bus driver, you would just need to select edit and then update the information on the next screen. Uh, but this add assignment, if they were going to be an ed tech as well as a bus driver, you can use this add assignment to add the ed tech as, uh, uh, staff assignment. Um, main schools notice, so if you are getting this, I would be very surprised because as of this morning, I believe we had everybody all set um, in main schools. If you do get this notice, let us know. Um, just be aware, um, but this should be all set. Everybody should be all set with main schools right now. So update all of your fields from top to bottom. Things will change as you work your way down through the screens. New additional screens will pop up depending on the position that you're putting in, depending on the um, level of the position you're putting in. All of that information will change what subsequently comes after. So just be aware of that, that you should fill out from top to bottom. Years of experience does roll over um, and accrues one year automatically. So you should not need to update that information in your NEO staff assignment for any staff. So just please be aware of that. And then update any contact information. This information should be school or organization email and phone number. Please don't use any personal contact information. People get very upset with that if you uh, because this is publicly reported on our NEO contact search. So you want to make sure that you're only putting out the information from their professional uh, school or organization email and phone number. For district role staff, um, those are going to be this is going to be a really important thing to make sure is up to date so that we can get into contact with the correct people for student data, staff data, any other collections that we have there. So just please make sure that those are all up to date and ready to go. Once you have updated all of the information, everything is, uh, is um, filled out and correct, you have the option to save. So this will save them as in progress. This is the save button will not make them an active staff assignment. It will save them as in progress. So you know that you need to come back and finalize any information. So if you're making a partial update to a staff or you need to check and verify some information on a staff member, Saving it will save it in progress and flag it as in progress so you know to come back to them. If you select the submit button, that is going to save the position as active, and that's what it needs to be on that in order to be on that uh, staff certification report. So active is going to give them the they're going to count on the report. So you'll want to make sure everyone is in that active state by 1030 when the report is due um, or before your superintendent certifies the report. So let's talk about locating the staff certification report. So we're going to go to certification. So this is in staff. Under certification, you have the certification report, which will bring you to this page here. Um, I know last year we had some questions that came in about filtering to see the uh, place where it would need to be certified. Um, fiscal year sorting to live data can get you that information um, at the bottom of the screen so that you can certify the, the data um, and update district rules. So these filters up here at the top can be really helpful in making sure that you have all the data uh, for this current year. You're going to see, this is, this is a really long list of positions in alphabetical order at the SAU level. 
um, and school level that you can see all of the number of staff aggregate counts of who's making up any position. Um, so you can see here, two, there's only one assistant superintendent of schools. Their position is in progress. So right now this would not be able to be certified because this is an in progress report. Um, and then you can see the number of positions and the FTE. So you'll wanna make sure that everything is updated before um, certifying this report. Um, you can view the positions here. So if you select view positions, you can see the individuals who are making up those aggregate counts there. Um, you can also see that information on the details reports. Down at the bottom of this page, this is where the information for EPS staff, so this is gonna be the total EPS FTEs of positions that count toward the EPS formula. Uh, so teacher, guidance, library, health, all of those will have their total e EPS actual FTE totals, and you can see those counts there. Down below that, these all need to be filled in in order to certify this report. So any eligible staff, so the staff positions do map to certain ones of, or certain options here under the designee. Um, so you'll have to just kind of be aware of that. Like your superintendent of schools will only map to someone who has a superintendent of schools um, position or I think head of schools as well. Um, so just be aware of that, that there are some of them that they do require a specific position. There is a new position on this this year for multilingual learner. So please be aware of that, that's a new one. Um, so you will need to populate that field. The contact information for any of these staff members should be as up-to-date as possible because these are going to be the primary contacts for DOE when we're reaching out about reports. So your student or staff data specialist should really be up-to-date. Um, I know a lot of other teams use this information to reach out like attendance coordinator, make sure that person is up-to-date. All of that information needs to be um, taken care of in this report. All of the ro all of the roles must um, have an assigned designee in order to certify the report. So select each one, fill them in. Whoever is the most responsible or most um, the most accurate person for each role, and then you'll be able to save the designees. Before a superintendent can certify this report. This list is at the bottom. Um, so you can see here that this is the certify button is grayed out and it will give you this checklist of information that needs to uh, that needs to be reviewed prior to the certify button being available. So one of those things is that the special education director has to certify the EFSO5 part two in the NEO special education module before the superintendent can certify this report. So that needs to be taken care of before superintendents can certify the overall report. We did a webinar on Thursday last week about that, and that is available on the DOE Data um, YouTube channel as well. So if your special education director needs guidance on how to find that report, uh, that is available in that report, in that webinar. So that's step one, that has to be done before superintendents can certify. All staff positions need to be active so if anyone is pending or anyone is in progress, it is not going to let you certify the report so that those all have to be taken care of. Um, so if you wanna pre prevent your superintendent from certifying before you review the data, leave somebody in pending or in progress and they won't be able to certify. They might reach out to us and ask us why, but make sure that they're aware that um, they cannot update anybody until that's all taken care of. And then make sure you've reviewed all of your district roles, everybody has to have, everything has to have a designee. You will not be able to certify the report. Your superintendent won't be able to certify this report until those are all in. And there, um, everybody will need to be, anything that says needs review in the staff details reports will also need to be taken care of in order to uh, certify this report as well. So there are a couple different things here uh, that will prevent a superintendent from certifying the report. Um, so just be aware of that, that this checklist needs to be complete before that certify button will allow them to certify the report. So if they're coming to you and saying, why isn't the certify button here? There's a list, there's a checklist here. Um, and this is available right at the bottom of that report. Uh, feel free to um, check that out. 
So that is the staff certification report. Are there any questions about how to complete this report? It is due on the 30th um, of October, so please be aware that that is coming. Uh, at the end of this month is when this report is due. Any questions? If any questions come up after today's webinar, uh, we will be posting this on the DOE data playlist uh, for you to refer back to. We also, um, if you need to have, if you have a specific question, please feel free to reach out to medems.support at maine.gov uh, or call 207-624-6896. All of the resources that we talked to, that um, we would have referenced in our previous webinar uh, regarding staff data entry, including like the appendices or anything like that, are going to be on the MEDEM support page under staff data entry and reporting guides. So all of that information is also available there. There are no questions. I think we can probably wrap up today's webinar. I hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday. Happy October. Um, all the reports are open, so please feel free to start um, going in and certifying, taking a look at things. The only one that's not open, not certifying, you can't certify October 1 yet, but um, take a look at your data, make sure everything's all set. Um, the dropout opens tomorrow, um, so we look forward to hearing from you and uh, helping you out throughout this month as we get these reports all in. Thank you all.